a short film now and for that follows a journey which is something of a pilgrimage to the past, a touching testament to the power and endurance of old memories and friendship. How many times yeah. have we done this? About six times? Well, together we've done it about half a dozen times. Perhaps, perhaps a few more than that. But uh, I don't think we have stayed very long on more than about uh, half a dozen occasions. Yes, we have been at least a half a dozen times. Oh, yes. Mostly going to Paris, but we've always had this intention, haven't we? Right yes. at the very start yes. of going to visit, as we call it, the battlefields. That's right. And we've never made it. Yes, that's true. But this time, here we are in Dunkirk, and this Calais. time, Stanley? Calais. Calais. Well, sometimes we haven't, we haven't made it to Dunkirk, have Yes, we? yes, we have gone to Dunkirk. But this, way. yes, this time... This uh, time we're in Calais. Yes. Yes, we're crossing to Calais. But previously we've been to Dunkirk, yes, haven't we? Yes, that's true. This time it's Calais. And we've always said, haven't we, for years now, well, for ten years back, yes. that we are going to visit the battlefields. Stanley will do it. Yes, we shall do it. Shall we? Yes. yes. We'll get to the farm. Yes, we'll you do remember that. the farm? Oh, yes, we must do it. That's the place, that's the place that we really must, must uh, concentrate yes. on. at Baxon Mall. How long were you there? Uh, we arrived there, let me see, about July of 1916. No, 1916. Yeah. July of 1916, and we left in May 1917. So we were a jolly good nine or ten months there. Quite a, a, oh, yes. quite a number of months there. Oh, yes, nine and, or ten months. Yes. And you came to contact with this young girl, Louise, almost immediately, but... Oh, don't suppose. refer to her so coldly as this young girl. July the 1st, when the Battle of the Somme opened. Yes. And then, by that time, you and Joe and Morris had joined the army. They had yes. gone uh, other parts. But you would so happen, when I finished up at Bac saint -Pont, you were not so far away. I was only about seven kilometers away from you. And we began yes. to visit each other. Yes, that's right. We began to visit yes. each other. mentioned this to you? I'm quite sure I haven't. I think in the dim and distant past you have. I, uh, 
this was so you had a Louise as well? This was another Louise. Are you merely, is this true? Are you making it no, up no, as you go along no. in order to be competitive? No, not at all. Not at all, the very fact well. The matter was, Carry on. when I went to live in Paris, she came to join me. go into politics at the present time simply because you know perfectly well that you're at the uh, other um, end of the, uh, the other end of the spectrum spectrum you're at the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> spectrum. Good word, that. spectrum. <laughs> the political spectrum from mine i'm red and you're what true blue and what's in the middle <laughs> Don't you? No, I can't say I do. Well, of course, you're just being damned obstinate. Of course you remember no, him. No, I don't remember don't him. Don't you? Yeah. Going back to this question of love, I'm not talking of love in terms of how and when and why you kiss a girl. Love in 1940 was like having a good balance in the bank. And you spent it quietly, prudently, modestly. If I were no, French, I, I would say, to the guillotine with a, with a capital yes, system. But I don't would you agree I'm with very me? Glad, I'm very glad you're not French in the first place, and secondly, I wouldn't say that even if I were French. I've already given you my reasoning, which you have characterized as Baltic. Very well, then there's, uh, we must agree to disagree. But we used to argue as children. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The whole time. Yes, of course. I mean, if I said black, you, you said white. Yes, but you were... Constantly, you were constantly attempting to teach me what you didn't know yourself. Uh, remember, there were two Curtises at school. Yes. One was called Beery and the other was called Creeping Jesus. Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> He was a clerk in holy orders. Clerk in holy orders. He, he and, taught chemistry and, he and religion. Very old. He, no, he didn't. <laughs> he I did. Was, he was my form master. There's no charge for that. Is there? He was very old and did creep about. <laughs> he wore rubber shoes. <laughs> and he and uh, the boys, being boys, nicknamed him Creeping Jesus. But I must say, it was something that always offended me. Oh really? Yes. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Because, of course, you sang well uh, as a child. I don't sing well now. No. <laughs> I don't know whether I would say fortunately or unfortunately. But, of course, you do remember, don't you, that I took the part of the Duchess of Plazatoro in the school in production of the Gondoliers yes, in sir. the year 1909. And I still have a photograph of the group that was taken on the stage after the... Uh, you have a photograph yes. of that? Yes. And I'm on it? The one you gave to Good me. Good heavens, I'd forgotten all about yes. that. Yes. You must show it to me someday. Yes, I will do. When you were at that village at Black Samoa. The farm? Yes, oh yes, I remember it well. It was quite close up to Armentier, wasn't it? Yes. Louise, you see, you felt quite warmly about her at the time and still do. Warmly? But looking back, you know, I've, uh, I myself have felt that I've always been, from that day to this, in love with somebody or something. Do well, you know that feeling? Well, no, I don't, I don't think I did. 
Of course, it's a hell of a business, really, to know what love means. Of course, in those days, if you kissed a girl, you'd had it, you see. Yes. I mean, it was, uh, it was on the doorstep to marriage. August the 4th, no, 1914. No, no, wait in the forum. Oh, <laughs> great crowds m massed in Leicester Square. Yes. Packed, and the air was full of cheering and screaming and yelling. You know, who was it who said somewhere in history, now they ring the bells, but by the time they finish, they'll be ringing their hands. Stanley, I... I've sometimes thought, you know. Uh, I sometimes give it thought. Because you know how you think, and the most extraordinary things come into one's memory from God knows where. That we go back to childhood. Now, my recollection is I think we've known each other, haven't we? Well... Since, since we were seven years of age. Yes, correct. That's perfectly true. So that brings us as friends and companions for 70 years. Yes, all of that. All of that. All of that. I was putting the claim for getting into a mess with a, a corporal over something. Oh, like yes, and you, and you wrote a poem. I wrote a poem. You wrote a poem, which I still have, as a matter of fact. Have you? Oh, Your, well, my face observer, old chatty Jim, is wreathed in smiles, perhaps to hide the soreness of my mm. heart and pride. My God, I wrote that? You wrote that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> impossible. I've never, I've never forgotten that. don't want to lose you, but we think you ought to go. 
I remember in 1914, before I joined up, going to the Colosseum, and there was a black velvet curtain. And coming before the black velvet curtain, there was a woman dressed in white. Yes. Seeing that song, a well-known music hall star she was yes. in those days. Yes. We don't want to lose you. Was it Elsa Jane? I forget the names. But I remember how stirred the audience was. I was, too. Yes, everybody Bloody was. silly little yes. fool that I was. During the First War, it was after, after Passchendaele, where we had done a lot of work in signals, that we were sent down for a so-called rest cure on the Somme. I remember that long, long, beautiful autumn, day after day, brilliant sunshine. And there were still in that area a few orchards that hadn't been utterly destroyed, and the fruit was hanging on the trees. And we came across places utterly reduced to rubble and dust. We played pit holes and crisscross by trenches. And occasionally, am amidst the rubble, we would find a little remnant of something, a child's shoe, a toy, or something of that sort. It was on New Year's Day of 1917, and we rumbled with our equipment and horses and wagons into Armentier to do a job of work in signals, yes. climbing up poles and whatnot, and they started shelling, and one of our chaps had his head blown off. Oh, yeah. And this, no, this, and this gave us a lot, you know, to think about. Yes. It was, uh, it was only the second casualty, the second real casualty, that we had in our section. We were only, mm. a, only a small section of 30 men. Yes. We lost one man on Gallipoli. Mm. That was very sad. Yes, it must have been. Did you know him well? I was not particularly close, but of course, we all knew each other very well. Yes, we were like a family. Yes. I mean, yes. when you share food and a blanket with a man, yes. you know, mm. and danger and death and despair, yes. there's, uh, you know, a link that binds you that, that's absolutely indissoluble. I recall her now as vividly as I saw her in those days. I'll tell you what she does remind me of. Do you know that picture by Vermeer, the head of the Dutch girl? She had that face, except that...
that where the Vermeer is dark, a brunette, she was fair. She had sort of flaxen hair, blue eyes, and she was always busy, busy, busy. And as sweet as you could make them. Louise coming in one morning in a state. Huh? She was crying. Her brother had been killed at Verdun. Well, of course, with us, you know, Louise being what she was to us, we were all terribly shocked. So, of course, we just mothered and com you know, comforted Louise as best we could, but she was in a terrible state. All the poor little sods. You know, the hundreds and thousands and thousands all rolled up. Three cheers for the red, white, and blue. To save the British Empire. For freedom, etc., etc.
Yes, every day, bang on at 8 o'clock, they, they come here and do the last post. It's an extraordinary. Now, you know, all those names over the great arch that we've seen over the gate, more than 50,000 of them, the names of the British soldiers who fought in defendants part of the area at the Menin Gate, and their names are all carved up on there. And none of these men has a known grave. No, that's the whole point. The unknown soldiers, 50,000 of them. Well, of course, one can't describe Ypres. It was, um, it was inferno, absolute inferno. And uh, the place where Menningate stands now was then just a place on the map. There was no Menningate. There was a culvert there, if I remember rightly. The, the old gate had been there. This is years and years ago, a fellow with wax moustache and a wing collar and a watch chain. Uh, he used to hold up a bottle of what he used to call the elixir of life. Three bottles for the price of two men. He used to make out that he had been a Harley Street specialist and been struck off for infamous conduct, whereby... Unfrocked. Unfrocked. He used to say, take these bottles, old men, and give your wife a treat. Lord Robertson Kitchener, Baden Powell and White. They were the heroes of the terrible fight. And I remember that little, I was about to say a rude word, that little <laughs> Lord <laughs> sitting on his horse. And then there was the, the little French one, 
Après la guerre finie, oh, yes. tous les Anglais partis, yes. les demoiselles de la France vont pleurer avec leur petit bébé. <laughs> well, Stanley, that's, that was marvelous. That but, uh, was a, a was French might French. understand it, but I don't think uh, that I could. Perhaps not many French could understand that it. Was a but wasn't, French. Listen, perhaps wasn't there not many French would understand it? Wasn't there an English version of that? Après la guerre finie, soldats anglais parti. Well, Mademoiselle in the family way. What followed? English soldier, no bond. No, there was something else, <laughs> another line. Uh, was there another one that went the tune of a hymn? Something about uh, that Dallas Sergeant Major. What's that one? Oh, I can't remember that. Yes. Oh. Uh, no more going home on furlough. Yes, no more, no going, more home going, home going home on furlough. No more going home on pass. On pa oh, yeah. uh, 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 well, of course, listen. the obvious run. Yes. When we were young men, we used to go into the country when we were 17 or 18, yes. or thereabouts. Yes. And we used to have take a walk in the country. Yes. Those were the exercises that yes. young men used to have in those days. And we used to go into, into pubs and have a, a half a pint of bitter and some bread and cheese. Yes. And I remember one occasion, it was in 1914, somewhere in the middle of July, and as we were coming home, we stopped because on Sundays in those days when anything important happened, the newsboy used to cry, special edition, you know. Yes, were also and we saw a placard on which were the words, assassination at Sarajevo. And we didn't know what it meant. Do you remember that, that incident? Yes, I do. That was in the middle of yes, July, I wasn't do. it? Yes, it was. And before we knew where we were, we were at war, it and it was, was all going to be over by Christmas. Oh, yes. And Kitchener pointing his accusing finger. And, the, and business was and to be as usual. And business as usual. Louise, that Louise. The girl um, at the farm? Yes, I remember her now so clearly. I remember in the period when I was in the clink, that girl managed to smuggle food and cigarettes to me inside. I remember seeing her. Poor Louise, you know, she'd be an old woman. Oh, yes, yeah. she, she, she would be about as old as we are. Well, she certainly, she certainly would be. We'll go along and, have, and take a look, shall we? Yes, I think we, I think we should do. It would be very pleasant to see her again. This time we'll do it. Yes, I think we should. We'll do it. I think we should. We can make it quite easy to Armentier. Yes, yes. And then go on, if I remember rightly. There was Erkingham. Yeah, yes. Back St. Moore, yes, near and Qua and Qua du Bac. Qua du Bac. There was that day that Louise and her mother went to the church. There was a memorial service for her brother, and she asked me to come along. And uh, you know the very thought now since she was done me. Cold, bare church. Can you imagine a church there in the front line? It was raining hard. We had to come back under our umbrellas in uniform. Great. But at the church, the, the priest, I can see him to this day, a lean, pale-faced young man, rushing through the service as fast as he could, as far as he was concerned. He wanted to get away. It was just a daily event. There was Louise, her mother, one or two other people from the village. They placed candles. And an urge came over me. I lit a candle. And I come to think of it, how strange. This was outside my persuasion.
What? We didn't have it at all. What, in our day? No. Yes, we did. No. It was a school song. No. I could never understand what it meant. Spay. Uh, I know, no, I know what the words meant, but I could never understand what the school hope, song was about. Hope, work, hope, work and faith. Hope, work and faith. Yes, but... Uh, like selves like Freeman, Harvey that, and Willis. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't introduced in our day. It was what? It was introduced later. Freeman, Hardy and Willis, yes. do you remember them? It was introduced later. What... Uh, faith, hope and charity. Uh, what I would know is, what I... Uh, I've always been amused about when I realised what it was, was the story, the... Um, tune that was played, the march that was played, to marches, marches out of Great Hall yes. after prayers. Oh, by Barry Curtis. Yes, by Curtis. Yes. And it was, in fact, one of the men's choruses from Rudigore, the words were, the words of which are, thank you, gentry, for your entry. <laughs> <laughs> An opera by somebody, Louise. And um, yes, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? It's, it's it's Chabrier. Not Chabrier. Someone in a name like his. Charpentier. Uh, Charpentier. That's Charpentier. Right. Charpentier. Charpentier. Yeah. Now, isn't there yeah. a famous aria that uh, the, Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, how is it? Well, what yes. is it in French? Yes. The name of it? Depuis le jour. Depuis le jour. What does that mean? Yes, that, since the day. Since the day. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Bang on. Since like the day. Depuis le jour. Je me suis donné, uh, and so on. <laughs> Stanley, this is one of the most beautiful it's arias really, really, I've ever... It's, it's heartbreaking, really, that aria. It is. Stanley, do you mind if I just go back to my Louise? Uh, I'll quite do back. Do by all means. Well, one of the things I recall about her, a little sort of um, physical mark of distinction, as she used to speak, so little bubbles used to come between her teeth. You must have got very close to her. Yes, yes, of course, I was very close to her. You think you're... Uh, Stanley, please, remember, all this happened in 1916. Yes. And in the years, 1916, 1926, 36, 46, 56, for heaven's sake, in the meantime, I got married, I begat children, I took jobs and lost jobs, and I was this, that, and the other. And then I did not realize that I had not lost my recollection of this Louise. This is surely ridiculous. It isn't. No, yes. no, please, don't interrupt. I know that you have a talent for interruption and also no good well, purpose, I, but just I know listen that to you me. have a talent for going on without allowing interruption. Right. But I've seen you How and you heard you. you on I've seen time. all your antics in connection with wine, your nose blowing, your sniffing, your label inspection, your gargling, your rolling up your eyes. I, I do, do know nothing, nothing about wine. I do nothing I mean, of the kind. I mean, you never have known anything about wine. Would you, listen, would you like I, to stick to the point we were talking yes, about? Yes, the point is this, that you bought two bottles of that very fine wine Although 1971 was not such a good year, and nevertheless, I'll give it to you.
life. I'll be your Valentine. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Blue bells I'll gather. Yes, I remember that. Take them and be true. When I'm a man, my plan will be to marry yes. you. Yes, I do. And I remember also coming down this road to uh, come to uh, find you. Well, of course, all this area in those days was just a cart track. Or there were cart tracks, well, not roads. Well, yes, yes. And I found my way to you often at night under a light of star shells. Star shells? Yes. You know, we've come back to this like a homing pigeon. Yes, it's perfectly true. You know, Stanley, how, how many years? 77, 78. Yeah. It's all passed like one day. You know, Stanley, now we're coming close. My stomach's turning over a bit. I wonder whether Louise is still there. Well, I hope so. We've come all this way. And now we've got so far, I have a feeling, a sense, that I've come to see her and I want to see her. I want to hear her again. Of course, I realize. She'll be an old woman. But I think I'd recognize her. And what's more, I think she'd recognize me. I want her to recognize me.
Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous sommes deux soldats de la, la Première Guerre et nous sommes revenus rechercher une femme qui euh, était jeune fille alors et euh, elle s'appelait Louise. Louise Elle est morte. 